This is the first of several video topics requested by my Patreon team, and it is long overdue because their support makes obtaining the research materials for these videos possible. So, did the Romans invade Ireland? Well, there are two ways we can answer this question. The first answer is a hard no. We have zero evidence of a Roman invasion if we conceive of invasion to be analogous to, say, Trajan's invasion of Dacia. We have no textual evidence and we have no archaeological evidence which indicates extensive supply depots or ports or anything of that nature. The second answer which we can give this question is that while we don't have evidence of an invasion, we have evidence of... something. This is a field which is still evolving in Irish archaeology, so it's entirely possible that what I am telling you in this video, which I have written the script for in October of 2022, will be outdated in even just a few years. And the limited evidence means the video will, by necessity, be short. So far as we know, Ireland enters the Greco-Roman world as a physical place sometime after the journey of Pythias, who sailed north past Scotland to some place he called Thule around 320 BC and also saw the coast of Ireland. The Emerald Isle then shows up in several other sources, although Ireland, Britain, and the rest of the little islands in that whole set appear to have been materially connected to Europe well before this because we find archaeological evidence which does indicate trade. Britain was conquered in several campaigns between the years 43 and about 90, and this is where the video's subject comes in. In chapter 24 of the Agricola, written by Tacitus, which tells us about the life of Gnaeus Julius Agricola, Tacitus' father-in-law, and a general dispatched to govern Britain and put down revolts, that Agricola started his fifth campaign by crossing a body of water and defeated peoples hitherto unknown. Usually this is interpreted to mean some place in Scotland, but we have one other source, the poet Juvenal, who at one point in the satires does mention that Roman soldiers had been to Ireland. We also know that Agricola was fortifying a portion of the coast of Roman Britain which faced Ireland. By itself, none of this means very much. It's entirely possible that Tacitus really is telling us that Agricola went to a portion of Scotland by crossing maybe the Firth of Clyde or the Firth of Forth. Roman artifacts have also been discovered in Ireland, which again does not mean very much. It's entirely possible that this was due to trade. However, in the 1990s, a site in Ireland, Dramana, was discovered which changed all of this. Covering roughly 46 acres, this has been described as the most important promontory fort from the Irish Iron Age, and the archaeology has turned up one Roman sword, two decorated antler combs, several amphora used to transport olive oil, and several graves containing Roman goods have been discovered on the nearby island of Lambay. Upon its discovery, it was put forth that Agricola had used the site as a forward base camp for an invasion. This was immediately controversial, but a more interesting hypothesis has been developed using other, admittedly limited, evidence. The same passage in the Agricola which tells us that he crossed the sea to places unknown tells us that an Irish prince was cast out of the island and welcomed by Agricola in the hopes that he might be used as a potential puppet king. There is a legendary Irish king, Tuathal, I know I probably butchered that, apologies to any Irish watching this, who was deposed by a rebellion and who then returned to his lost kingdom with an army. There are several sites associated with the legend, and which are associated with conceptions of Irish kingship more broadly, where archaeologists have uncovered Roman artifacts, including weapons and weapons made in imitation of the Roman style. At all of these sites, Roman coins have been discovered, many of which are dated to roughly the 70s and the 80s, when Agricola was governor of Roman Britain. Also discovered at some of these sites, and unfortunately they're so corroded that we don't really know, are bracelets which could possibly just be jewelry, but which look like a certain form of Roman military decoration bestowed upon a soldier for bravery in the field. Taken together, there is one argument put forth by professional historians and archaeologists, which essentially is that all of this strongly suggests that Agricola was keeping an eye on the political situation in Ireland and gave either material support or actual support to some claimant to some polity in Ireland during his tenure as governor. Tacitus's comments and the ruin of Drumana suggest that, if a Roman force was dispatched to Ireland, it was perhaps done so covertly. 
perhaps far from being a beachhead for a Roman invasion, maybe it was the staging ground for logistical support for a Roman-backed coup or other political military intervention somewhere on the island. Or perhaps there really was a Roman garrison stationed there in support of some Irish kingdom or chieftain, and it failed to make its way into the textual sources. We don't know for certain, and our only real hope is that further digging will shed light on what is proving to be a fascinating mystery of Irish history.